So we'll add a new text layer and we'll put 100% gold on this. And we'll just set the uh, colour of the text to white, so we can do that up here by selecting it all. If you just double click on the layer, by the way, that will select all the text. Uh, make sure you've got a suitable font. So, uh, mine's already selected on the one I used before, so I used the eBrimmer, made sure it was set to, set to bold, because you want it to be like a nice, kind of thick indent. And you'll find I've never used like ridiculous embossing fonts like that. It's always something quite very easy, very legible, no fancy serif stuff going on. Okay, so our size is probably about right. Like, it's up to you guys what you want to write. And um, you could put boolean or whatever after it as well. But I'm just going to put 100% gold like that. Make sure it's uh, nicely, nicely centered. Obviously, if you really want to make sure it's 100% like centered, you can use your grid. Your grid here. And if we set this to like percent or something, maybe put grid line every 20% with one subdivision and then show our grid. That'll make it a bit easier to line this up. Or not, as it happens, because we've got some. Uh, this side is over far, uh, further stretched over this side, so actually that's no use. Um, so we'll just leave it like that. That's pretty much centered. So with white color for the text, we'll then put a black background behind it. Merge these two down, and I'm just going to duplicate that and turn one off. And then we're going to use endo again here to convert that across. And this time we are just going to use the standard endo tools rather than any of the presets. So the first thing we want to do is put the slanted down because it's supposed to be embossed. Um, and then we'll put the size down to about two. And that's already not looking too bad, but you can mess with, you can actually pick embossed from the bevel here, which looks pretty nice. Um, so I don't think that's too bad actually, that's kind of what we want. So um, let's just select all of the layers that Endo is using and just collapse those down with Control and E. Um, it does actually have this blend node you can use to make it overlay but it doesn't seem to work. So um, for now anyway, in the version I'm using it's best to just use the, you know, the manual technique of pasting white in here and grey into one. I'm sure that you know they will resolve that soon so you'll just be able to overlay it properly but right now it doesn't appear to work. Okay so we'll set this one to multiply and this one to overlay and there we go we've got our, our text looking nice in there. Maybe it'll look a little bit thick so we'll put the opacity down a touch and if we just save this out and jump back into Marmoset, we can see our embosses working pretty nicely. Um, one thing I find with Marmoset, I don't re really like this default um, sky map. So I tend to pick another one, something like that. Works pretty well. We'll put the brightness down like that of the background. And let's turn the brightness down here somewhat. Okay, so the we've got our roughness map reasonably well done, our normal map done. Mm -hmm. uh, the only other thing I want to do is some just general wear on the roughness map here. So if we just jump back into close that one now. Jump back to our roughness map. We'll add a new layer in here and turn on our, our UV. 
And then what we'll do is select white, and I've got a brush here that I can use for like edge wear, basically. So um, let's just have a look at the settings for that. We don't need Endo anymore, so I'm just going to get rid of this actually. Can slow it down a little bit, so that's why I like to close it down. Um, so in our brush tip shapes, if you just pick this one and in shape dynamics, just have a little bit of size jitter on this, and obviously make sure your control is through pen pressure and scattering. Um, Um, I tend to just kind of leave it like that actually for now. Yeah, that's okay. And in dual brush, um, I have this one selected, and you can see I've got a bit of spacing on this, and set the size and stuff like that. And then all I'm going to do is just literally just run along these these edges here. Like it's very thick and chunky to start with. Um, but we're going to delete some of that out anyway afterwards. Probably is a bit too big actually. Went on the wrong, wrong one then because I was talking and not concentrating. Remember if you hold shift you can do a nice straight line. And obviously anything outside of these borders, it's only going to be the inside detail that's actually shown here. There we go, so we've got our initial kind of detail in there. And now if we just jump to our eraser tool and use the same brush that we had before. Um, make sure that you save your brush preset obviously, so in your brush here, new brush preset and give that a name. And then if we just jump into our brush here, so yeah that's still using the same brush. And what I kind of and what I might do as well is just increase the scattering a little bit just to make it a bit more a bit more random. And I'm also thinking that the um, the corners should be a bit more worn than the other kind of surrounding areas. And one thing I didn't show you here actually is if you just use a mask for this, so you see if you just hit this add mask button, then I'm still de I'm deleting stuff out like this but it's non-destructive, so if I then change back to my brush um, then I can actually just paint that detail back in as long, as long as you're on the mask. So see how that detail's come back in even though I'm painting everywhere. So um, I find that really useful actually, just painting onto a mask to delete stuff out rather than rather than just deleting it straight from the, um, from the layer. So again, like here, I might think I would probably delete a little bit too much of that out. So. All right, this was the area where I'd already um, I'd already painted some of that out without doing it in the mask. So that's why those bits weren't appearing. You know what, let's just uh, try that, see how that's looking. 
Okay, so with that now done, we can turn off this. And obviously, this is far too kind of white at the moment, so you might we'll just turn that down, something like there. Okay, so now if we just save that out again, um, and also we want that to be inverted as well, so it should actually be darkening this rather than rather than lightening it. Now. One sec. So I think what we'll do with that is just invert it. Now, if we just try saving that, and then we'll have a look at that in Marmoset. And you can see now around the edges we're getting that slightly worn kind of look to it. Um, one other little thing we've got here is around the gold. So you see how we're doing quite a worn kind of gold bar, but actually the text we've used is very, um, very kind of perfect. So one other little thing you can do is actually come into this text and tweak this somewhat. So we won't do this right now, but what we'll do is actually take that text layer from our original, our original one. So if we just go back into here, and um, what you can do is maybe blur that slightly to start with. Like so. And then use, we could actually probably get away with using the same brush that we have before. So stick a mask on this, make sure you've got black in your background here. Yeah, we won't use a mask, we'll just use a standard brush, select the black, and you can take out like little bits of the little bits of the text like this. So I like it's had a little bit of wear on it. What I probably should have done here actually is not, not blurred it just yet. Blurred it like that afterwards. So now what we can do is just go back into the Quicksell Suite, Endo on that layer again. And do exactly basically the same settings that we had before. You see how much of a difference it's made having that uh, having that blur on it now. So something like that might be a little bit more a little bit more appropriate for what we've got, but we'll leave that off for now. I think we've shown you kind of enough with this anyway. So that's our kind of final final gold bar. I do think it's a little bit over reflective actually. So um, if we just come back into our roughness map, we'll add a brightness contrast on the top of this and just turn down the brightness and turn down the contrast a little bit. Save that out. And maybe just turn down the opacity of that so we don't want it too dark. And there we go, I probably I quite like that. So there we go, that's our finished kind of gold bar. So um, we've got all our different textures, combination of different normal maps, um, a roughness map that's partly painted by hand, partly using kind of image ref. Um, I'd suggest painting as much of this by hand as possible. Because um, it is the kind of real kind of artistic map of all of this. Um, one thing we didn't do actually, let's just do that real quick, is add some of this detail into our into our Bido map. So something I quite like to do is say just take this image here and put this onto our albedo map, like so. Um, control A, Control C to copy it and just turn it off. And if we just add in a new layer, 
and then apply this as a mask and color pick on this and just value that down a bit um, you see how you just get that little bit of detail in your albedo map so we've darkened it down a little bit so we'll just do that and then just save that back out and that's made the smallest little bit of difference but that's you know those, those small little changes that will really kind of enhance your your scene and your, each of your uh, each of your kind of models okay and our metalis map was obviously embedded in the alpha of our albedo um, so yeah that's that